In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate a few more Mesa Troll Pocket Cutting Techniques. Start, by navigating to the program page. I have an existing program I'll be adding these pockets to. I'll verify I'm in the right program. And select Program Edit. The first example, will be this pocket shown here with one side open. At the bottom of the existing program, I'll start a new unit and select Face Machining. This will be a standard pocket. Depth to the bottom of the pocket is through the part at 0.35 inches. I'll set stock removal Z to the same 0.35 value. Since I don't care about the bottom finish, I'll set it to a 1, leaving me 0 for finish allowance Z. On the walls, I'll choose a 5 leaving 14 thousandths for a finish cut. I don't have any interfering walls or clamps here. So I'll set interference distance to 9 inches and I'll break the edge with a 10 thousandths chamfer. The control has prompted me for a rough and finish end mill, and a chamfer cutter. Starting with the first end mill, I'll highlight the nominal diameter field and select tool data window. I'm going to use a half inch end mill for roughing. Skipping priorities, I'll use auto set for approach point X and Y. This is where the tool will position before plunging into the part. I want to roll heat cutter into the material, so I'll choose Intelligent Pocket Machining, Counterclockwise Cut. This will use a trochoidal type of cut. I'll be plunging off the part so I can plunge in rapid. I'll use Auto Set for Depth of Cut Per Pass, Auto Set for Width of Cut, Auto Set for Cutting Surface Speed, and Auto Set for Feed Rate. I'm going to adjust the width of cut a bit to 0.05 inches. I'll also make sure M8 is on for flood coolant. I'll use the same end mill for the finish tool and follow pretty much the same procedure for the tool cutting data. Since there will be no stock in the middle for this tool to cut, I'll plunge in rapid to the finish depth, using auto set for the rest of the settings. For the chamfer tool I'll use my 0.5 inch chamfer mill. Using auto set for approaches, a counterclockwise tool path, feed into the chamfer in Z, and auto set cutting conditions, making sure flood coolant is on. For a figure pattern, I'll use arbitrary. I'll use this corner for my shape start point. I always use line to define the start point. The location of the point is minus 5.2 in X, and minus 3 in Y. The only other entry I need, is to make sure attribute is set to closed. From there, I'll draw a line to minus 5.2 in X, and minus 2.6358 in Y, with a closed attribute. Next, I need a counterclockwise arc moving to minus 6.7 in X, and minus 2.6358 in Y, with a 0.75 inch radius. With the final point defined, I can skip the arc center point definition, by inserting question marks for I and J, and I need a closed attribute. Next, I need another line moving to minus 6.7 in X, and minus 3 in Y, with a closed attribute. Finally, all pocket shapes must start and end at the same point, so I'll add another line returning to minus 5.2 in X, and minus 3 in Y. For this line, my attribute will be open, indicating this is an open wall. I'll use XY plane check to check my work shape. This looks good. Looking at the shape in the graphics window looks good as well. I'll add a temporary end unit, and go to tool path to see how things look when cutting. Using path restart, I can jump directly to the desired cut. Using path step, you can see how the cutter plunges outside the part, and rolls into the cut, gradually moving into the part. Moving to full simulation, you can see how the tool rolls into the cut exactly the way I wanted it to. Going back to the program, I'll delete the temporary end unit and demonstrate one more way to make a pocket. As you can see, this complex, shallow pocket, has no dimensions defined. I'm going to use Mazatrol 3D Assist to make it easy to program. Once again, I'll go to Face Machining, Pocket. To find the depth of the pocket, I'll refer to the model in 3D Assist. I'm not going to go into the complexities of 3D Assist here, that will be in a separate module. I just want to illustrate, how easy 3D Assist can make certain processes. After importing and aligning a model to my part, all I have to do is click a few times to import dimensions. In this case, I'm looking for the depth of the pocket which is equal to the length of this line. I'll click on the selection type field, choose length, and return to the model. Clicking on the line in the model, the system enters the length of the line in the green box. By selecting the input button, that value is brought into the current field in the program. 
I'll close the 3D assist window for now. And finish entering data for my pocket. In this case I want a good finish on both the bottom and the walls of my pocket. I'll use the same end mills I used on the previous pocket. Making sure I plunge in feed mode when making the pocket. For my pocket shape I'll go to 3D assist again. Notice the control has pre-selected bottom for the selection method. Clicking anywhere on the bottom of my pocket has selected its contour automatically, with the number 13 in the green box. When I click on input, 13 lines of input data define the shape of the pocket. Looking at the shape in the graphics window it appears to be correct. One more thing I need, is to make sure the pocket is cut from the inside to the outside, by changing parameter E92 bit 0 to a 0 in TPC. Note, this will change the parameter for this unit only. I'll add a quick end unit. And jump to simulation to watch the pocket cut. Everything looks good. So I'll go back to the program, delete the end unit. And I'm ready to continue programming the part.